Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and as I continue my series of tutorials where I demonstrate how to use keyboard shortcuts in Excel, in today's lesson I'm going to place the focus on keyboard shortcuts that we can use rather than reaching for our mouse for the commands in the cells group. The cells group is found on the home tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007-2010. The commands that we're going to use keyboard shortcuts for involve columns and rows and later on individual cells or ranges of cells. First, I'm going to show you how we can select all of the cells in the current row with this keyboard shortcut, Shift plus Spacebar. When we use Control plus Spacebar, we select all of the cells in the current column. Now, why would you want to select all of the cells in the current column or the current row? Remember that before we can perform an action in Excel, we first must make a selection. So let's just say that we've selected all of the cells in the current column. Perhaps we would like to delete that column. So Control minus will open up a, a delete cells dialog box, or if we selected the entire column, just Control minus will delete that column. If we want to insert a blank uh, column after we've selected column or columns, Control Shift Plus. In other words, Control Plus Plus. So Control Shift Plus will insert according to our selection. Now along the way I'm going to use a very handy keyboard shortcut. Shift plus F10. Shift plus function 10 is the equivalent of using your right mouse click to open up the shortcut contextual menu. Alright, let's get started. Notice over here that I've numbered my rows from 1 to 10. This is going to make it easy to identify rows that I delete or I hide. So if I want to insert um, a blank row here, first let's make a selection. Shift spacebar allows us to select the entire row. If I want to insert a blank row, now that I've made that selection, Control shift plus there you go. If I wanted to make a selection of two rows to insert, all I do is I can start off by just selecting two cells that are contiguous, and then shift spacebar to select the entire contents of those two rows, Control shift plus want to delete it? Again, remember what I have selected. I've selected two rows, so Control minus will delete that. Come back up here, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm not going to select the entire row. Instead, I'm going to say Control minus to bring up a dialog box. So over here, when I use Control and minus, it brings up a dialog box. So do I want to have this affect the individual cells or the entire row? So I can use my down arrow to select the entire row, click Enter, and there you go. The same applies for columns. Now, here's how I remember the difference between uh, selecting the entire column and selecting the entire row. You see, both of these keyboard shortcuts involve the space bar. C for control matches C for column. So control space bar is the way that we select the entire column. Shift space bar for the entire row. So let's come back over here and let's use uh, control and the space bar to make a selection of individual uh, of all the cells in the column. So let's select three cells over here and then control space bar. Now I've selected all of the cells in those three adjacent columns. If I said, oh, I really want to have one more in there, just hold down Shift and move your directional arrow. Now, if I want to insert a blank uh, uh, column, all I can do is use Shift F10. This is another way to do it. Shift F10, remember, brings up the shortcut contextual menu. So I could move my down arrow, but notice that there is an underlying letter for each of these commands. So if I just press the letter I for insert, bingo. There you go. Now remember I have uh, these four columns selected. Let me use Shift F10 and this time I want to delete from my selection. So the letter D in delete is underlined. Press it and there you go. Let's use Control Z to undo that. So remember another way to make a deletion is to use Control minus. So Control minus will delete from our selection. If it was an individual cell and I use Control Delete, I'm going to get a dialog box. 
So I, do I want to have my deletion affect the cells and in which direction do I want to move them, left or up, or do I want to delete the entire column? So you see how I use my down arrow to make that choice. All right, now let me use Control Z to bring that back. Now I want to shift over and show you keyboard shortcuts when it comes time to hide the current row or to hide the current column. To hide the current row, use Control and the number 9. Control and the number 0 will hide the current column. So let's come back here and let's hide this current row. Control and the number 9. Want to hide another row? Control and the number 9. Want to hide a column? Control 0. Want to hide another column? Control 0. Now, how do I bring these um, hidden rows, hidden columns back into view? So in this case, I've hidden column 6. So what I first need to do is I need to make sure that I select the columns that surround the hidden column. So let's come over here and select these two columns, and let's use Control Spacebar, and now let's use Shift F10 and use the letter U to unhide. So you see, I'll repeat this, I'll use Control Z. So column 6 is hidden. I need to make a selection of the columns that surround the hidden column. So I selected two cells, Control Spacebar to select all of the contents of the current columns. Shift F10 brings up the shortcut menu and rather than you know, uh, tapping down, you see the letter U is uh, underlined and unhide. Just press U and there you go. All right, now notice over here that we have multiple rows that are hidden. So row 5 is hidden and we also have row 9 is hidden. Well, one way to quickly do this is to select all of the rows. So I'll just come over here and I'll select all of these cells and to select the entire row, it's Shift spacebar. Now I'll use Shift and F10, and I want to unhide the letter U, and there you go. So hiding and unhiding rows, hiding and unhiding columns, the key element to remember is that if I hide a row, Control-9, if I want to bring it back from being unhidden, I first make sure that I select the rows that surround the hidden row. Shift spacebar, Shift F10, the letter U. If I want to move a cell rather than the entire row or the entire column, let me make a selection of three uh, cells over here. And if I use uh, Control Shift Plus, here's the dialog box. So in this case, I want to shift these cells down. See how I use my directional arrow? Click OK. And now it moved it down. Let's use Control Z. If I bring up that dialog box, Control Shift Plus, and I wanted to insert an entire row, you see that's one of the selections in there. So there are many ways to perform actions in Excel. Control Z to undo it. Now, before I finish this lesson, I want to reinforce that when we delete a selection of cells, we're only deleting the contents. We're not deleting any underlying formatting. So let's come back here and for this cell, let's use Control B to apply bold formatting, Control I to apply italic formatting on top, Control U to apply an underline, and let's change the font size. When I press delete, all I'm doing is deleting the contents. If I come back here and start to type something in, you see that underlying formatting remains. If I want to delete uh, the entire uh, content and contents, in this case, the easiest way to do that is delete the entire row. So shift, spacebar, control minus. So now that row has been deleted. Let's bring back a new row, a new blank row. So I have the entire row selected. If I use uh, Control Shift Plus, now I have a new row that's inserted. And whatever I type in, now it's just the general formatting that I have applied in there. So deleting will only delete when you're, when you're deleting a selection of cells, not the entire row. You delete the entire row, you delete the contents as well as the formatting. When you delete an individual cell or a range of cells, you're deleting the content, but any formatting that has been applied remains intact. So 
there you've learned some really valuable keyboard shortcuts. They're really important to master. I, I just find that when I'm working with a laptop on a bumpy plane, or I just don't want to reach for the mouse, having these keyboard shortcuts under my command is the way to go. And I'll look for you in my next lesson in the series of Excel keyboard shortcuts.